Hello and welcome to Avio's Journey. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I'm excited to talk to you about how to know what type of books to audition for. Okay, uh, I think that this is definitely a question that has come up more, especially with some of the challenges that have gone on with ACX. And uh, and when I say challenges, I mean, you know, all of the different flooding in of books that are not necessarily grammatically correct or, you know, just, uh, you know, just the struggle sometimes of finding a book that's actually going to be worth your time and effort. So I think the first thing to note is, is that you've got to determine what type of books you want to do. So if you are trying to do audio books that are nonfiction, well, that's definitely one genre, right? If you're trying to do books that are fiction, that's the other. However, with Within fiction and nonfiction, there are many other subcategories, right? Uh, you know, in fiction, you have mystery and thriller. Uh, there's science fiction. There's fantasy. There's uh, drama. There's romance. There's so many different, you know, subcategories and subcategories of the subcategories. And then in nonfiction, you know, you have more and more subcategories there as well, right? I mean, you've got finance. You've got uh, personal growth and development. You have, you know, memory. Memoirs or biography, you know, um, you know, all kinds of all kinds of different uh, things there as well. So, you know, we've got this idea that you know you you've got to narrow in your focus and thought, or it's it can be very messy. That's one thing. Okay. The next thing that you need to do is you need to make a decision what you are trying to accomplish with the books that you are auditioning for. So what I mean by that is there are many different ways that you can audition. Uh, I mean, get paid for uh, for the books, right? You know, you can have uh, books that pay you a royalty per how many books that are sold. You can have books that also do um, that pay you, you know, per finished hour, right? Uh, and it can be anywhere from, you know, a couple of bucks to hundreds and hundreds of dollars per finished hour. That's up for you to decide. But here's, I, I think the heart of this question, right, goes to, you know, how do I find books that are either uh, well-written enough that makes me want to do them, um, narrate them, or that are ranking well enough, like on Amazon or something, for me to spend my time auditioning to work with them, especially in a royalty share uh, format. So I want to dive into that really quickly. So first off, for royalty share, you want to be looking for books that meet a certain type of criteria, okay? Um, the first step is to do some research and to see what ranking that book is getting. Anything that's over, you know, 20, 30,000, uh, 50,000, anything that's over that, is really a book that you might want to think twice before auditioning for royalty share. So remember, royalty share, and, and I'm talking about through ACX, uh, the audiobook creation exchange, right, which is owned by Audible, which is owned by Amazon. So, you know, that's kind of a primary place where freelancers can go and um, freelance uh uh, freelance voiceover artists and freelance writers go to meet up and, and produce books, you know, these indie books, and they can get published and everybody can make some money. So, you know, that that when I'm talking about royalty share is something that you need to know what ranking it is, because if it's too high, right, meaning like if it's over 100,000, the likelihood is, is that you're going to do a lot of work and not make any money. Okay, on a royalty share, you get royalties for seven years as a voiceover artist, and you share in uh, a percentage of the royalties. So um, currently right now, ACX is doing a little extra special. So you share in 45% of every book that's sold, but you share that. So you will receive like 42.5%, You or 22.5%, excuse me. Usually it's 40%. So you would share in 20%. So that means if a book is a dollar, Right, an audiobook is like 99 cents. If you sell one, then you're getting 20 cents. 
Does that make sense? Like that's how much money you would make. So you can see here that you have to sell quite a bit in order to make money, but there's, you know, there, so that's why volume comes in and there's, there's many different um, tactics here. But the point is, is none of that matters if your audiobook is not selling, which means that you've got to pick a book that firstly has a high enough selling rank. So that's why I try to choose anything under 50,000, 20,000, 10,000, the closer to, you know, one, you can get the better. The second thing that you want to look for is have people uh, actually purchased the book and, le and and have left a verified purchased comment, okay, uh, or review. That's important because there are a lot of books that can also get onto uh, the KDP uh, Unlimited program, or and and basically it's a free thing that uh, Kindle offers through Amazon, right? Where they can promote books by offering it for free. And an author, depending on how many downloads they get, there's like a pot that Kindle puts in every month of like a couple million dollars. And depending on your download, as an author, you might get you get some of that money depending on how many downloads you get. But it can a uh, falsely rank a book all right meaning like it can falsely rank that's why like if you ever go see well how much does this book sell for and it's like free you're like it sells for zero you're on kindle you're like what's the how is it for free that's what that is so now that doesn't mean that you get zero if it's sold you'll still get what the percentage is if it was to sell regularly all right because you get a percentage of the audiobook not the book but you have to think about that when it comes to rankings that it might be you know like by the time you finish narrating the book you might go on there and you're like wait Wait a minute, it was like 5,000, now it's 150,000, right? And you know, you're like, wait a minute. So, but that happens and that's hard to you know, that's hard to measure, but that's just something to be aware of. But that's why it's important you have verified purchases and reviews so that you can look over that and say, oh, yeah, this is good. Uh, they like that. They're getting purchased, et cetera. Now, this is getting harder, but it happened. But you also want to look at how long a book has been on the market. Ideally, it would be nice to do books that have been on the market longer than three, six months with verified purchased uh, reviews and has a really great ranking, that's the ideal book for you to audition for because it's proven itself, it's getting reviews, it's getting purchases, so that means the audiobook is likely going to get reviews, and you can find that, all right? And we are talking about royalty shares here. But if we move to the other side, which is per finished hour, then I mean, you have to decide what your price is. Right. Because if that's the case, then it really doesn't matter what ranking it is. Right. It's the price in which they're going to pay you. But you have to decide, too, though, what type of books you're going to go out for. What are you going to audition for, et cetera, et cetera. And what your price is going to be. You know, when when just starting out, uh, you know, they they offer on ACX like zero to fifty dollars per finished hour. Then it's like 50 to 100, then it's 100 to 200, and then it's 200 to 400, I think, and then it's 400 to 1,000. So those are the per finished hour rates that they can fall under on ACX. And, you know, you have to decide what you're willing to work for. Okay. Now, I always make sure that I take half up front and half upon delivery so that I don't get stiffed, okay, uh, from all the work that I've done. But, you know, that's up to you. But remember, on ACX, you have to literally. Uh, get paid through PayPal or whatever. The ACX doesn't handle that payment unless it's uh, unless it's royalty share, right? And then which comes that comes through your Amazon account. But the idea here is that you uh, are choosing books that are hopefully paying you what you want. But there, we can go a little bit further and say, okay, are you choosing books that are appropriate? Um, or when I say appropriate, appropriate for what you are trying to accomplish? Like, for example. If you like when I started, I wanted to build a business that had residual income and I wasn't looking to become a famous audiobook narrator and all this stuff. I was literally just trying to build a business and using this as a cool. Yes, I was excited about doing audiobooks and I wanted to do the best I could, but I wasn't interested in the um 
I guess, the optics of how everything looks. But as I have come along in the business, I've realized some things about, you know, uh, you're trying to build a, 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 a brand, right? What you put out is a part of that brand. So if you're trying to become, a, you know, an, a, a, na- a narrator that does, you know, mystery thrillers and fiction and you want to work with Penguin Audio and you want to work with, um, you know, these different places, right? Uh, like Random House Audio and all these things, you know, you you want to pay attention to the type of books that you accept to work on, right? Meaning like, you know, you work on some novels that are longer than a couple, than an hour or two, right? You work on some of these things. But for me, I didn't care about any of that. I wanted to just get myself published. I mean, you know, be an audiobook narrator, enjoy what I was doing and make some money. I wasn't caring about that. But those are all things to consider. And, you know, then you have to go into, do you want to do books that are really well written or books that are not so well written? And yes, there are tons of books that are not well written. And if you've seen, uh, you've been on ACX, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, you know, that that is a challenge. Now, I will say this. ACX is just a place. It is a great place, especially for new people trying to get voiceover work. It's probably the best place to get voiceover work just starting out uh, because there's such a high demand for uh, audiobook narrators um, that it, it's probably the easiest place to get work to start. Uh, you don't need a demo. You know, you don't really need much of anything. You're just literally auditioning. Uh, and because there's such a steady flow of books and, and there's just always something there that's available. So that's that's one thing. But, you you know, there's other places. There's tons of other places to go to get audiobook work uh, like web, like these casting sites, Voices.com, Voice123, uh, Upwork, Fiverr, all of these places. And by the way, on a side note, no one when when someone purchases an audiobook or or someone uh, you know promotes you you know like your name or whatever as a narrator, they never promote where they bought the audiobook from. They don't say, oh, well, I bought this uh, audiobook from Anthony on Fiverr. They don't say that. OK, uh, you know, it. these platforms are for us to reach clientele. OK, so I just I, w- I want you to be aware of that. Um, but there's also other sites other than these platforms like, um, you know, uh, I think Penguin Audio recently came out. They used to have Ahab uh, like Ahab. Um, and that was a site that they had, but they have done it recently and I haven't been there recently to check that out, but they were supposed to be adding more to that site uh, because it was basically like you put yourself on that site and you didn't, I mean, no one ever found you. I mean, I don't know who was actually benefiting from that site. Um, but, uh, but now there's also sites like uh, find a way voices, there, there find a way voices or something. There's all kinds of, there are, there are other sites out there that focus um, completely on audiobooks. So that would be something for you to discover too. But ACX is by far the biggest platform completely dedicated to audiobooks. And since it goes through Amazon, clearly it is the largest and most um, prolific, if you will. Uh, but anyways, listen, I hope this has helped out. I, just a quick video about some of the thoughts and ideas that I have uh, and answering that question about knowing what audiobooks to go after. Uh, also, there is a rate guide that I, I, I made and put on a VOsJourney.com, my website. Uh, it's, a, it's a rate guide that talks a lot more about uh, rates that are, I guess, more tailored to freelancers and people who are working, uh, you know, every day, kind of like every man's rate guide. So if you want to check that out, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's free to take a look. Uh, that would help you with pricing. If you're trying to figure out what to, what to charge for books and everything, and gives you a little explanation and stuff. But other than that, I hope this has helped. Thank you so much for watching. If you get a chance, please hit the subscribe button, uh, and like this, leave a comment. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Monday. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.